well i'm back with another video i know you guys been waiting on another video um i hope you guys watched today's video well yesterday's video um i did a review on the crayon case the uh, matte book and the anglola highlighter powder that i bought you should you guys should go watch it so today's video is pretty much going to be a story time about how i dealt how I, I personally dealt with domestic violence so um i met my ex when i was 16 and um ended up having a child about him so it was a period of time where after i had my my oldest son that he went away to jail if you was close to me then you knew that this what was this is what happened um so after that period of time he got out you know by then i was 18 so we would you know spend time together to me being young and dumb i'm just gonna be honest and I used to spend a lot of time with him, um, pretty much trying to make sure that he was in in my oldest son's life. So I think me, I now I didn't personally know this until after we I had ended the relationship, but um, apparently he had started doing um, what was it? I think it's cocaine. And he had started getting abusive. So when it first happened was I moved into, I think, yeah, when I was 18, I moved into, it was so I was a couple months after I graduated high school, I moved into my first apartment. And at the time, it was just me and my son and my mom. But, you know, he ended up moving in with with us so um it will be times where he'd ask for money and at the time i didn't have a job so i was staying in a based on income apartment so only type of income that i had coming in was government assistance or the utility check that they would give us to pay our light bill so it was this point in time where i had i got my government assistance now majority of the time i would spend that on my son to make sure he had clothes and shoes and making sure he had the essential things that he needed so he had asked for ten dollars to what he say he wanted ten dollars to buy weed and I was like, no, I'm the type of person that if you have a bad habit, I'm not the type of person that'll support your bad, your habit. So, like, if you have a habit where you like to drink all the time or you like to smoke all the time and you ask me for money for it, I'm not going to do it. Like, I, I won't even buy it. Oh, my, my husband smokes a mod. And the oil for the mod is, like, to me, it's high. Is like thirty dollars or thirty thirty or more. I won't even buy him oil for his mods, and he know it. Like he know if he want oil for his mind that he's gonna have to get it himself. If you want, like that's with anybody, not just my mom or my husband or anything. I'm not gonna get it for you. That's your habit. It's your habit that you picked up on that you need to make sure you keep you're able to keep doing it. I'm not gonna be responsible for it. So and when he asked for the ten dollars and I asked what for he was like to buy weed. So me me being me, I'm like no. So he goes back out the house. He at the time, the person in front of us, that stayed in front of us, knew him. He knew him way before I even moved into the apartment. So, he went back down here. At the time, I didn't know this, but after we broke had broke up, I found out the reason why. He actually he wanted the money for cocaine. Him and 
him and the dude standing in front of us was at the dude house, you know, doing drugs and stuff like that. So, at the time I told him no. So, he got mad. He went back downstairs. Me, now this wasn't the first time. I'm just telling y'all this one time. Me being me, I knew, like, because he was mad. Well, I knew that if something was about to happen because when he got when he mad when he got mad, he left out the house. But instead of just regularly closing the door, he slammed the door so hard to the point that my door. Okay, you know how some doors, well, majority of doors they open when you open them, they push inside the house. He slammed the door so hard to the point that the door was outside the house. The door was jammed. So I was like, I ended up, I think I called my sister. I called my sister's husband. I called one of them. I, I had told them what happened. And I was like, come get my son. I was like, come get Fat Daddy because, you know, so, such and such is mad that I won't give him no money. And, you know, I don't want, want him to, you know, see whatever is you know about to happen so i'm standing i'm standing in my bedroom window i'm on the phone talking to my sister but i had i had previously already had the window open you know letting fresh air in so i'm standing in the window talking on the phone to my sister and he's standing outside mind you my bedroom the front of my apartment is facing the dude's front of the front of the dude's apartment so he was him and the dude was standing outside and um, he seen me in the window talking on the phone. He started talking a lot of junk, mad and stuff. So he starts running up the steps. So, uh, where was my mom? No, I think my mom, by this incident, my mama had moved out by then. Um, so he runs up the steps and because he had jammed, the door he had to actually like kind of push it real hard to open so once he did that he came in um right before he was about to try and choke me my sister then my sister husband came in and he got my son well he was trying to get my son but he was like my ex was so mad to the point where he wasn't allowing my sister husband to get my son. He was like, no, this is my child. You can't take my child nowhere. I'm like, I'm telling my, telling him to get, get fat daddy. I'm like, get fat daddy. Take him to your house. It was like, it was like bad to the point where I think I ended up putting, because he was blocking the door to where my uh, sister boyfriend couldn't get out. Now, my sister boyfriend was trying so hard not to, you know, have to fight him. So, I was just politely took my son in the room, in my bedroom, and I closed the door. Um, and then he was like, he started, he started getting extra mad. He was like, why you call him up here and all this other type of stuff? And then next thing you know, his, his hand is around my throat. And he's pushed me into, like, we was in the living room. So here go here goes the living room, and then the kitchen is right here. So the living room, well here go the living room, here go the kitchen. The doorway is right here. So we standing in between the doorway, and he put his hand around my neck and push me into the wall while he's trying to choke me. Now this instant was the last scroll. Because I was like, okay, I'm too young to be dealing with this. My son, Yeah, my son is only one years old. But I don't want my son growing up to think that it's okay for you, for him to put his hands on on uh, females or, you know, already yet. Yeah, it's okay for him to live off of a female and, you know, do drugs, have a whole family and do drugs in the process. So... After that, I was like, no. After that, I was like, no. It's I, I have to I have to just let this whole situation go. So I ended up 
I think he left, and my my sister um husband made sure I was okay. And then he ended up leaving, so I ended up calling my mom, and I was like, at the time I didn't have a car, so I was I asked my mom to come and get me, so that she could uh take me to go get some new locks. Because at that time, I was like, no, I'm not doing it. So, I, I uh, was finna go and get some new locks. And me and her was going to change the locks. Um, she had told me that, you know, by her being there a couple of times, her and my sister having to, you know, actually stop him from trying to beat me up. Um, she was like, okay, does your dad know? I was like, no. I, I, and the type of... The type of person I know my dad is, I knew that if he would have known, then, you know, it was a possibility that, you know, he would have been in jail. So, my mom was like, either you tell him by such and such, or I'm going to tell him. So, I didn't want, I didn't want to tell him, but I, I knew that if I didn't, my mom was going to tell him. Now, I'm not really sure if it was me or my mom that told him. But somebody, somehow, he found out to, to where, you know, I know he was kind of upset with me that I didn't let him know. Which is understandable because you finding out that within a year's period that your daughter has been abused by her boyfriend. And you know nothing about it. Like, nobody knew about this. Nobody. Nobody. Only person that knew about it was my mom, my sister, him, and my sister, um, my sister husband. No, just, no, and a couple more people. Nobody knew about it. So, I was like, I changed my locks. It's like, um, it was like, it was hard, but I knew it was what I needed to do, so... Even after then, he would call and he would try to use my son to get back in the house. Or he'd be like, I'm homeless. I don't have nowhere to go. I'm just going to be honest. It is not your fault that someone wants to abuse you and manipulate manipulate you and take control of your life. I'm, it's... it's you don't have to deal with it. Like, I didn't have to deal with it, but me being the person that I am, I, I'm I'm a type of person that give people multiple chances before I be like, no, it's dead, cut off. So I, those multiple chances, I thank God, I truly thank God that I got out when I did because um, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. Like, my son could have been continued to see that or something could have happened to me or my son. To where we wouldn't be here today for me to be able to talk about it so i'm just here to say that if you're in a relationship and you're dealing with domestic violence get out i know it's easier said than done because it was plenty of times my mom and my my sister would be like why are you constantly dealing with this i'm not gonna keep coming up here keeping him from doing this and that to you when you constantly stand with him, but it's easier said than done. A person is not going to leave until they get ready, until they feel like enough is enough. They have to know, they have to decide when enough is enough. You, this is coming from some person, somebody that dealt with it before. You have to give them that, that chance or the opportunity to be like enough is enough for them because whether you get them help or not, some people will only just go back. So, domestic violence. Domestic violence is violence or abuse or other abuse by one person against another in a domestic setting. That is domestic violence. So, I'm going, this is my experience with domestic violence. I only told you a little piece of it because if I did, then it would be a whole big video. So, that was my experience with Max Valley. I thank God that I got out. I thank God that I'm with someone now that doesn't put his hands on women, that doesn't condone domestic violence, that is showing my kids what a man is supposed to be like. I will put 
um, a couple links at the end of the video of domestic violence hotline numbers and um, test messages that you can see in the website. So anybody that's going through domestic violence and wants to get out but doesn't know how, these links will help you. You can even message me if it's possible. I can help you, you know, find places to go or something like that. If you're, you're dealing with domestic violence and you want to get out. I love you guys. And remember, if he hits you, he does not love you. Get out for you and your kids. Do it before it's too late. You don't want your family and your friends going to a funeral for you because you dealt with domestic violence when you could have just walked away. I know it's easier said than done, but get out before it's too bad. I love you guys, and don't forget, if you need help, that you can message me or you can contact one of these links that I will put at the end of the video if you're needing help to get out of a domestic violence situation. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.